What up guys, welcome to another AMA. We are rocking and rolling here. Let's dive into your questions, get into some stuff about health and maybe some other stuff along the way. This question is Brendan, I wanna start getting into swimming but the, the pool is heavily chlorinated. What can I do about that? The benefits of swimming, if you really get into it, are going to outweigh any of the risks of chlorine. Right after you swim, get a fresh water shower. My buddy Austin actually installed organic Jaguar shower filters at his gym. I don't know if you could pull that off. It's a pretty unique gym in San Diego that he goes to. Just get a good shower in after you swim and it's gonna negate some of the negative effects of chlorine. It's not gonna be on your skin for as long. But honestly, man, swimming's so good for your lung health, your just overall health. So I would definitely go for it. The next question is, Brendan, will you ever do an electrolyte mix that is just unflavored? No stevia, no flavor, you know, like completely unflavored. So we will work on that. But honestly, right now, people want the flavors, the dragon fruit, the lemon lime, the mango is something like crazy, lemonade, orange. So those are going off right now. We're probably going to do more flavors before we do an unflavored one. But yes, we will eventually do one that's completely unflavored. We might do it in capsules or we might do it in a powder. So working on that for right now. This question is, Brendan, how many tablespoons of honey should I be having every single day? So this is going to vary on your activity level. However, I am a big fan of raw honey. I think there's benefits above just, it's, you know, a good source of carbohydrates, some fast acting glucose for our body but I try to limit it to like two to three tablespoons per day. Sometimes I'll do more if I'm churning through calories, like that day where I lifted and went surfing into jiu-jitsu, I probably had four or five tablespoons of honey because I'm cranking through calories at that point. But I think two to three is a good area for most people to be in. Um, and if you're not doing too much activity, I'd probably limit it to one. This question is, Brendan, how do I overcome burnout? Burnout is something that's really common and for anybody that's in school, it's really difficult because you're sort of forced to do this work that you don't really wanna do. And for a lot of people that are working a normal job, same thing, you're forced to kind of always work on this stuff that you might not feel too good about. What you have to do is in your own spare time, do a little bit of something that you like doing. Whether this is, if you're in school, whether just reading a couple pages of a book that you like or doing some piece of art that you like Make sure to spend that time on yourself, whatever that means to you. It's very important to do. Sometimes I'll get burned out with activities. Maybe I'll go on a surf trip or I'll be doing a lot of jujitsu one week or a lot of lifting and I get a little just like burned out of that, that activity, like lifting, like I love lifting. But if all I do is lift in one week, I can get burned out. You have to have variety. Turns out our brains and the way our brains are wired like variety. For example, if I'm getting sick of doing a certain type of content, even with, with this type of stuff I'm doing right now, I'll switch it up and I'll be like, you know, I'm really pissed about this topic. I'm going to do some of society's biggest scams. Or you know what? This new product came out in the grocery store and I think it sucks. Let's go rip up this product. Or maybe today, let's go give somebody $500. Like, you got to switch stuff up in your life and get that variety. This question is, Brennan, which is worse for your health, vapes or SARMs? SARMs are selective androgen reuptake modulators, and they're really popular nowadays with the youth because it's just like an orally active thing that they think isn't that bad. Oh, it's not that bad. They're really bad. Vapes are also really popular with the youth. Um, and basically, big tobacco has repackaged their products into vapes. And they've convinced people that they're not as bad because, oh, they're discreet and they're friendly and they taste like candy. Now, if somebody's like super dialed in and working with maybe a doctor, I could see them doing SARMs in some way, monitoring their hormones and everything. But let's be real, bro. That's not you, okay? <clears throat> I know a dude named uh, Marcus Fit, for example. He's like uh, Dylan's friend in San Diego. He's a bodybuilder. If that dude does SARMs, yeah, that's probably not going to be that bad for him. It might even be beneficial in terms of like his goals of putting on a lot of muscle. So I'd have to go vaping. It, vaping is horrible for you. There is no way that vaping a tobacco product is good for you. You're basically just addicted to putting poison into your body. It's horrible. You need to give those up. It's really stupid to do. And so are SARMs. Don't do them. Uh, but yeah, both those things are pretty bad, but if you had to make me choose, I guess I would say vaping. The next question is, Brendan, how do I overcome binge eating? So there's some like really cool hacks you can do for this. There's one study showing glutamine, like you can take glutamine in water and that's going to help with some sugar cravings. There's some interesting stuff like that. Don't be magnesium deficient because it might, magnesium deficiency can actually increase sugar cravings. Don't limit your sleep, like get enough sleep because that can increase food cravings. But overall, you need to have preparation. You need to have delicious delicious snacks in my freezer right now. I have an ice cream made with raw milk, fats, fruit. If I like want a tasty treat, that's what I'm going to go dive into. Maple syrup, fruit, raw milk. 
And guess what? That's not bad for me. So you need to develop strategies. Like look at some of my recipes of like tasty stuff, which I should do more of. And that is going to be your best defense. If all you have in your fridge, I don't have bad food in this house right now. There is no chips with seed oils in here. There's not, not, it's not here. I would have to go to the gas station or store, buy chips with seed oils, which I would never do, and then come home and eat them. That's not going to happen. So you're telling me you're binge eating. What are you doing with that food there? Just don't do that. And another really good tip is when you get that craving, this is for people who just uh, don't have as much willpower as me or maybe you watching this, but let's say someone with, with little willpower because willpower is a skill that you have to develop. You really want a pizza, okay? You're craving a pizza from Domino's, all right? You're like, I, I just need this. I need this. You're fiending. You're on the app or whatever. I don't even have the fucking Domino's app. I've never downloaded that. Wow. I mean, if you have the Domino's app, delete it. What are you doing in life? Okay. You have the Domino's app open. You're like shaking, man. You're like, I want a pizza. Do this, say, okay, first I'm going to get 40 grams of protein in, and then I'm going to get my Domino's. If you end up even getting the Domino's, because after you drink a protein shake with 40, 50 grams of protein in there, you're probably not even going to be hungry for the Domino's because it will literally biologically reduce that craving. But even if you still get the Domino's, you'll probably have one or two slices because your body is going to be full. Try that out. Let me know if it works. The next question is, Brendan, what can I do about my severe anxiety? So there's some basic stuff that we're going to get into right now on actual stuff you can like do, like put into your body for anxiety. And then we'll get into some of the overall, you know, ideas about anxiety and some other strategies. First of all, make sure all your nutritional deficiencies are fixed. The body basically can send a signal of anxiety when you are deficient in certain vitamins, minerals, or other inputs like sleep, okay? This can send basically your cortisol out of whack. Your cortisol can be, let's say, way too low when you wake up, way too high in the evening. You need to just get your circadian rhythm dialed in. Make sure you are dialed in with all of your nutrition, basically. And yes, this is a huge thing. Like your body can get anxiety if you don't have enough B vitamins, if you don't have enough magnesium, if you're very low in vitamin D, it can affect your brain health. So get all that stuff taken care of first. And now we get into some of the breathing techniques. What I want you to do is every morning and every night for 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night, you're going to practice a breathing technique in which you lengthen your exhale. So you're going to breathe in and then do a long exhale. I'm not going to bore you guys with it right now, but basically you're breathing in about this deep and exhaling. Little inhale and repeat. You're going to do that for 10 minutes. Okay. You can do whatever while you do that. You could put on just some relaxing music. I wouldn't put on like some death metal or any shit like that. to make it difficult. That is a good strategy right there. That's some basics that is going to, that are going to help you right there. The other thing is just mindset. So if you stack just wins in your day, like you start going to jujitsu or you start playing basketball with some people or you start lifting weights, you're going to get less anxiety just by, you know, your brain is going to enjoy the inputs that's being put into it. Get your sun, get your vitamins, all that, but try that breathing technique. Let me know how it works for you. The next question is, Brendan, I live in a heavily polluted city in Asia. What would be the best way to work out? Damn, that is rough. I really don't understand people that want to live in like the middle of a city. It's just not for me, okay? I like being around some greenery. I like being able to breathe in fresh air. If you are in a heavily polluted city, I would definitely still work out like a demon. Yes, you're gonna be breathing in uh, some pollutants, but the benefits of having good cardiovascular health and endurance vastly outweigh that. It's so stupid that even when there's wildfires in California, they tell people to like not exercise and not breathe. Basically, I don't even know what they're trying to tell people. That's dumb. The risks of not being physically fit outweigh those of breathing in the polluted air. You're going to be breathing it in anyway. Let's be real. What you could do is get a HEPA air filter. You can get a HEPA air filter... They're usually around $100. I have a few around here going right there. What that's going to do is help filter out some of those contaminants, and then you can do an at-home workout. Get a kettlebell, get some bands, and do that at-home workout. That's going to definitely give your body some, you know, decent air. The other thing you can do is hopefully find an area with some, like, greenery, basically, like a park. I hope there's a park where you live. I don't know. Maybe it lives in some, like, really dystopian place in China or something like that. Um, 
And if this goes on TikTok, we love China. You need to find like a park. And this is why in New York, people go to Central Park and stuff. Trees literally filter the air. Plants filter the air. You should get plants into your apartment or your dwelling, wherever you live. The snake plant is a really good one that filters there. There are others. You can find the NASA list of plants that filter the air. So you want a lot of plants in your house. HEPA air filter. Be working out there. Find a park and go walk around there and do some workouts there. But overall... Don't even worry about it too much. Do those things I told you, but the benefits of working out are gonna outweigh the benefits of living in a polluted area. Get your money up, move out of there. The next question is, Brendan, when are you going to release those organic Jaguar boxers, the collab with Organic Tarzan? Dude, we have been working so hard on those. I really like how Austin doesn't rush things. He's actually such a stickler for detail. Sometimes I hate him for it, uh, but I actually love him for it. We worked on basically sourcing glyphosate-free organic cotton boxers that are soft, which was difficult to do. Some of the samples we would end up getting were just like kind of rough, they didn't feel good. And then we got some samples that were perfect, but they were too long. You don't want boxers that are anywhere near your knees, you want them to be a bit shorter, right? And then we got one where the fly wasn't like right, like the fly of the boxers. So we finally dialed them in and dialed the design in, and the big thing, guys, is they're gonna be way, way more affordable than like the top brands out there like NADS. So I'm really stoked for these, and they should be out mid-December. This will probably be released early December. Go to organicjaguar.com or just Google Organic Jaguar Cotton Boxers. Use the code Santa Cruz, and you're going to save. They're amazing. We're selling them in three packs. This is very important, guys. There are studies showing that if you wear polyester on your cojones, it's not good for your fertility, for your health. And it's so simple. It's like, why not? I have organic cotton boxers on under here right now. Rock and Polo Ralph Lauren right now, but the Organic Jaguar are absolutely amazing, and I'm stoked to rock all the colors. Go get them. The next question is, Brendan, what is the best time of day to take a vitamin D supplement? So vitamin D, we all know, is one of the best supplements there is on planet Earth. It's cheap, it's affordable, and if you're deficient in vitamin D, you're wrecking your skin health, bone health, brain function. When is the best time of day to take them? The best time of day to take them is in the morning or afternoon. Vitamin D is known as the sunshine vitamin, and it's called a vitamin, okay, vitamin D3, but it's basically like a hormone. It acts like a hormone in the body, and so you want to take it in the morning or the afternoon because your body naturally would get it from the sunlight. So you don't really want to take that at night. Um, there's nothing really wrong with taking it at night, but the way I think about it is, okay, this is a vitamin uh, that we synthesize from sunlight. I'm going to take it in the morning or in the afternoon to just send my body that signal that would be more in tune with nature. The next question is, Brendan, what are your thoughts on overnight oats? So I think there's like a brand called overnight oats out there. So I'm not going to review that in terms of just making overnight oats yourself. So getting some organic steel cut oatmeal and like, you know, soaking them basically to make the organic oats. I think that would be the best way to do oats because soaking is going to help reduce a lot of that phytic acid in there. Now, oats can basically cross react for people that have gluten sensitivity because they have some proteins like avenin that can cross react with people with celiac disease. So if you notice that you eat oats and you don't feel good in your gut or skin health or brain health, try cutting them out for a little bit, then add them back in to see if that was the cause. But if you are going to eat oats, I actually would recommend doing that overnight oats sort of strategy where you soak them. That's going to be the best option and reduce that phytic acid. The next question is, Brendan, is lavender okay for men? I see a lot of posts about it reducing testosterone. So I actually have read a lot of the studies and I do also see some concerning info on lavender and testosterone. So I actually have pretty much cut out using a bunch of lavender oil. I used to bring it in the sauna occasionally and pour that on there because I do really like the scent. I've basically moved away from using lavender scents and we probably won't be using lavender in any of our products. Do I think that if you use lavender sometimes your testosterone is going to tank? No, it doesn't appear to be that powerful. So if you like lavender here and there, you know, go for it. Uh, sometimes when I walk uh, my dogs, I like to grab a little lavender and smell it. I'm that kind of guy. I do not think, and I get lab work done, that it's going to lower my testosterone level significantly. However, let's say you're a guy who's taking lavender essential oil. First of all, don't be that guy, bro. Come on. But like taking lavender essential oil and like rubbing it on themselves like all the time, daily, maybe using a lavender deodorant, like you just love it. It might cause issues with your testosterone. So um, yeah, definitely something to note. The next question is, Brendan, how do you clean your fruits and vegetables? Is cleaning them with baking soda good? So if you want to clean your fruits and vegetables, there's many different strategies you can do. Baking soda and warm water is going to do the trick for most people. Bro, I'll be completely honest with you. If I buy an organic fruit, I'm just eating it. I'm giving it a little rinse sometimes in reverse osmosis water, and I'm just eating it. I just don't have time, man. I don't have time to soak all the berries and clean all the fruits, but 
if I did have time, or maybe someday, if I get balling, I'll have a private chef someday. I'll tell them to, to probably clean it. Baking soda, maybe a touch of vinegar would probably do the trick. The next question is, Brendan, what do you think about cornflakes? So I definitely think cornflakes are garbage. We're talking, okay, you're going to start off your morning with sweetened, enriched GMO corn. Why? You know, you have options in life, right? You could start your morning off with a protein shake. You could start it off with eggs. You could even start it off with some protein oats, okay? If you want me to throw something out, that's a bit different. But no, you're going to choose to start your morning off with GMO corn that's been heavily sweetened. I think that's one of the dumbest things ever. And the unfortunate thing is many people legit will think that is healthier for you than eggs because they believe this cholesterol myth that, if oh, the egg yolk has cholesterol. It's going to clog my arteries and make me die. And then they'll eat their corn flakes. Let me know what you think about that below. But me personally, I'm good off sweetened corn. The next question is, Brennan, why don't you grow a beard? So I definitely can grow a nice beard, which you might see when I grow in my stubble. But I actually choose to sort of keep the same look. One, because of continuity of the content that I film. So I film all this content, right? And sometimes, you know, different people are editing stuff. You know, I might do a grocery store video on something one day and then do another piece on it another day. And if I constantly look so different, it's actually sort of difficult as a content creator. Much like actors are told when they're filming like a role for a movie, they can't go get like a, a buzz cut or whatever. It would ruin the movie if they had to reshoot scenes, stuff like that. That's one reason reason. Another reason is jujitsu. So like if you roll with a dude with a lot of stubble, like maybe another two, three days of this, sometimes it can be a nightmare. You just get like, you know, really bad, like scratches, stuff like that. Um, and I like having sort of the clean shaven look. The next question is, Brennan, are you religious? And if so, what religion are you? So what I definitely firmly believe is that there is a God. What does that mean to me? It definitely doesn't mean some white dude in the sky with a, a beard. I, I don't think that. But I definitely have a, a, a God. There is something to this universe, something to this world. You know, I don't know, man. It, it's, it's a really difficult question to answer. I'm not very religious. I grew up going to church. I have deep respect for religion. I think a, in this era. We've gotten so out of whack and we hate on people that are religious. I think that's insane. I think that's insanity. We'll hate on people that believe in Christianity or they're Muslim. I think that's insane. I actually have a lot of respect for people that believe in that stuff and that they go to church every single week. I like that. I don't <laughs> I would trust that guy, like taking care of my dog, for example, than somebody who's like, I am an extreme atheist. I don't believe in anything. That's, that's all I'm saying. But I definitely believe in a God. Um, I've gone to the jungle. I've drank an ayahuasca. Uh, I've eaten a lot of shrooms at different points in my life. And let me tell you, there's more to this life than when you die. There's just nothing there. That's what I think. Let me know below what you think. The next question is, Brendan, what is the best way to build endurance for a sport, for just to build your endurance and cardio? So you actually want to go about this in a certain way, and it's involving training in the different zones. Because if you just try to train hard cardio every single day, you're, oh, I'm going to go on a five-mile run every single day. Well, one, you're going to burn out, and that's going to negatively affect your cardio. And two, you're going to just get good at one type of cardio. When I'm doing a sport like jiu-jitsu, for example, there's actually many different types of cardio that you're getting in. This is true with most sports, football, soccer. You actually aren't getting one type of cardio in. So if you just like go on a 10-mile run often, for example, you're going to get really good at running 10 miles. What you want to do is switch it up. You want to do a bit of cardio that's actually relatively easy. This is just light cardio, just walking on a treadmill for like 20 minutes uphill, just like chilling. You know, you could have a conversation with somebody. And then you want to get into some cardio that's a bit more intense, maybe in that 10 to 12-minute range, you know, be a little difficult to talk to the person next to you. And then what you do, what you also want to do is do like, sprinting cardio where you're like just going brutal like 30 seconds hard as you can 30 second rest 30 seconds as hard as you can 30 second rest you know 40 on 10 off something like that where you're doing a sprint type of cardio blend all those into your training space them out and you will develop a really good gas tank this question is brendan how can you combat bad posture how can i fix my posture this is something that's really crucial for a lot of men they just want to look good and posture is a key part of that and then also it can negatively affect your actual shoulder health 
health, your spine health, your neck health, your hip health, when you have bad posture. So there's a few things to look at. Starting towards the ground, you want to make sure you have good ankle and knee mobility. So you want to make sure that your ankles have good dorsiflexion and extension, and also basically you can get your knees over your toes. Start spending more time in a deep squat and figure out basically where your ankles, knees, and hips are lacking. Then you can open them up doing functional range conditioning, doing stretching, doing different types of kettlebell exercises, basically spending more time in the positions that you suck at and working out on those is going to help. When we get up into the glutes, you need to do glute exercises. If you don't exercise your glutes, you're probably going to have something called anterior pelvic tilt, which is where you like, you know, put an image of anterior pelvic tilt right here. A lot of people have this and this can really wreck the rest of your body. Then when we get into the shoulder uh, exercises, you really want to have a strong back. If you don't exercise your back through rowing, through pull-ups, through different banded exercises, activating the lower trap, you're basically going to neglect a lot of these muscles that just never really get used in our modern world. We're here. This is where we are. We're here all the time. So if you don't do some of these exercises, you're probably going to have posture issues. Hanging from a pull-up bar is great, but overall, take breaks from work or school. Do some of these posture exercises that you can look up and stick to them. This question is, Brendan, I'm a teen. I'm very healthy. I go to the gym a lot. Is it okay to have a weekly cheat meal? So I would say totally. I don't think that's an issue. If you're extremely healthy and you're young, you can definitely have a cheat meal. Now, what I would say is, what is this cheat meal? Why are you doing it? You should actually like look into that. Doesn't mean you need to not have your cheat meal. But you know, if you're just like going in and eating 15 donuts from Krispy Kreme, that's fine. But you should realize that as you get older, it's going to be more and more difficult to overcome that. So maybe I'd make your cheat meal something that at least has some protein in there, some actual filling nutrients. And again, I go back to the strategy of have your cheat meal, but have some protein before, okay? Because this is going to help you in so many ways. And right now you're a teen, you can just churn through stuff. But if you keep this habit, or maybe the habit gets a little bit out of whack, now you're 28 years old and you have two cheat meals a week, and maybe you're not looking that good. You need to just be realistic with it, but for sure, have your cheat meal, enjoy it, just stay working out. This question is, Brendan, what do you eat for breakfast? My breakfast is usually two things and I vary them. One is a protein shake. I love having a protein shake in the morning because it's easy and it's going to provide me with, you know, 40 to 50 grams of protein. Milk, Santa Cruz Paleo Whey or beef isolate. Sometimes I mix them. A little bit of fruit, you know, throw a banana in there, some other fruit, depending on the protein shake recipe. That's an amazing breakfast right there. Oftentimes now it's like getting a bit colder. So that cold protein shake like doesn't hit the same. Eggs with cheese. Four or five eggs. Boom, boom, boom. Whisk them up melt some butter in a pan, throw that in there, soft scramble, you know, I don't want that like crazy overcooked scramble, I want like that soft scramble, put them in a bowl, throw a bunch of raw cheese in there, mix it up, a little pepper, a little blend one, and that's amazing. The next question is, Brendan, which sunscreen should I wear, and are there any specific ingredients that I should avoid? So what I would do for a sunblock or sunscreen is get a mineral-based sunscreen where the active ingredient is zinc oxide, not titanium dioxide, zinc oxide. And you should avoid chemical-based sunscreens, which contain oxybenzone, avobenzone, um, octocrylene. First of all, these really damage our, envir our environment, like our oceans. They bleach our reefs. It's horrible. They're banned in states like Hawaii. But they also really damage our bodies. And spraying oxybenzone on yourself is not a good idea. And you can look up what some of these chemicals do when they react with chlorine. And guess what? You're probably getting in a chlorinated pool if you're in the United States and you wear sunblock. So get a mineral-based sunscreen where the active ingredient is zinc oxide and the other ingredients are, you know, good and that should be the best option. This question is, Brendan, what would you recommend taking instead of Advil? So Advil is such a popular thing. People just pop these things like candy. Oh, my knee's a little sore. Well, I'll take an Advil. That's a bad idea. I'm telling you. Now, I'm not saying Advil should be banned or something. You know, it has its uses here and there. I take turmeric with CBD. You can look up Santa Cruz Medicinals turmeric caps. That is what I use, and we have so many athletes. I literally have a pro jiu-jitsu world champion coming here today because he's injured, and he's like, dude, I need those turmeric caps. He's fiending for them. Pretty much what you do is you take two of them, and turmeric and CBD are both powerful. They're really powerful substances. I do not take this formula every day, and I don't even use it for long periods of time. I use it when I'm very sore or maybe I've injured something. So a few days, I'm like, oh my God, my shoulder's like really sore or something. Like, damn, okay, I'll take them three or four days. And that is a really good protocol right there. You can look those up, Santa Cruz turmeric caps, and use the code America20 on that website. 
So you get them for cheaper. This question is, Brendan, what do you think of red light therapy? So red light therapy is basically using these red lights, which have frequencies that have been shown to be beneficial in many studies. I actually think red light therapy is beneficial if you wake up and it's like very, very dark where you wake up. Now it's a little dark when we wake up here, but uh, the sun's starting to come out at like, uh, you know, like 7.30, something like that, like seven-ish. So we're able to get some sunlight usually most days. But I do have a small red light device, I think it's a Juve or something like that, no affiliation. But there's a lot of companies making these red light therapy devices. I would recommend it if you can get one and it's affordable enough. You can get probably a mini one and like put it near your computer or something like that and get some of that red light into your like eyes and face in the morning. Um, but overall, the studies don't show me that I need to invest in one of those like giant red light devices. I just, the research is cool, but it's not like, oh my God, this is like insane. Maybe someday I'll have like a red light thing in my sauna, something like that, but pretty cool. Maybe get one if it's dark in the morning where you live. That is it for this week's AMA. As always, leave your questions below and I will get to them. And if you want to try out any of our formulas, go on santacruzpaleo.com, use the code santacruz10 for 10% off. And if you want to get them on Amazon, just type in Santa Cruz Paleo. We're releasing some amazing stuff, guys. We got the tubs away we're working on. We're gonna have, you know, the pre-workout coming out, the pump focus pre-workout. It's absolutely amazing. It's stacked, it's delicious. Super stoked for all that stuff. If you wanna try the organic cotton boxers that I launched with Organic Tarzan, just go to organicjaguar.com. Use the code Santa Cruz when you get those. And yeah, I appreciate you guys so much. Stay healthy, get after it, and I will talk to you soon.